he defines the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ar-Rabb as is found in Majmu' Al-Fatawa which is a collection of the writings of Ibn Taymi rahimahullah ta'ala by Shaykh Abdul Rahman Ibn Qasim may Allah have mercy upon him Ibn Taymi rahimahullah ta'ala he said that Ar-Rabb is as follows Ar-Rabb is as follows so we're going to build this definition onto what we just heard. So what we just heard from the Ruby of Allah is He is the creator, the owner, and controller of all affairs, right? So we have those three things, the creator. So Ibn Taymi, rahimahullah ta'ala, is going to give us something to give us more detail about that last thing, which is a tadbir or a tasarruf, the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all things. He says, rahimahullah ta'ala, huwa al-murabbi, Al-Khaliq al-Raziq al-Nasir al-Hadi All of these after Al-Murabbi are all names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right he is Al-Murabbi the nurturer from the word tarbiya Al-Rabb is Al-Murabbi the nurturer what does that mean he says Al-Khaliq al-Raziq al-Nasir al-Hadi he is a creator. We already heard that. He is Ar-Raziq, the provider. Al-Nasir, the helper, the aider, the defender. And Al-Hadi, and the only one that guides. He is the guide, the deity who guides the creation. Again, he is Al-Murabbi, Al-Khaliq, the nurturing Lord, who is the creator. Al-Raziq, Al-Nasir, Al-Hadi. He is the creator, he is the provider, sustainer. He is the Nasir, the defender, the helper. And he is Al-Hadi, the guide. He explains elsewhere that the highest Ambitions of the human being, the highest maqasid and himam of the human being are three. Everything that a person really wants who is sound minded and has a sa'i to attain and achieve go back to three things. All of the endeavors of the human being go back to three things. And they are the three things that we just heard that are found in those names of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala Al Hidayatu wa Nasr wa Rizq. Guidance, defense, and sustenance or wealth, right? Sustenance. So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He is a Raziq and He is a Nasir, meaning that He is the one who is in control of benefit and harm. He is in the one He is the one who is in control of benefit and harm, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Nothing can protect you from harm illa iyahu, except for him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you single out Allah tabarak wa ta'ala as the one who alone can bring about, who can protect you from harm. Because he is an nasir What other names of Allah are similar in meaning to an nasir There are a few of them. Al-Hafidh. There is one that combines both the meaning of protecting against harm and bringing about benefit. Al-Wali, Al-Wali, and Al-Mawla as a name for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Mawla as a name for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who protects against all harm, and He is the only one who can bring about good for His servants. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is the meaning of his bringing about good for his servants is a risk, his sustaining, providing them, providing them with health and wealth and sustenance and children and food and and the aqwat, and the daily rations and what they eat and so on and so forth and shelter and all these sorts of things. This is from the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And al Hadi and Al Hidayah, guidance and guidance. And he says in order of importance you have guidance you have we'll give you a random order and then we'll give you 
the opportunity to say what is most important. You have protection from harm. You have being provided for. And you have guidance. What do you think is the order of importance from most important to least important? Security? That's number one. Safety first. Guidance, right? Guidance is the first. And then security. And then sustenance. Most people, they have it completely flipped around, right? Most people, they give importance to money first, even if that puts your deen and your dunya at jeopardy, even if that jeopardizes your freedom. A person is willing to die for money, right? A person is willing to be, as a Prophet Sallallahu described some people, fi akhir zaman in the end of times, yabi'u deena hu bi'aradhi mina dunya, na'udhu billah. A person will sell his deen for a portion of the dunya. A person will sell his deen for a portion of the dunya. The greatest fitna of this ummah is money. The brother said woman, which comes in the other hadith. And those two things are muqtarinan, right? They say no money, no honey, right? You want to get married, you got to have some money. Don't take down the perverse context. Right? Right? So a person, the most important thing for them, Ibn Al-Tamir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, even as, as relates social prestige and the status of people in society, the most honored people, naturally, in the society are those who undertake the guidance of the society from the people of religious knowledge and the people of political authority who are guiding the people according to the teachings of the religion. And then under them, you have people who stand up for the defense of the society in a military capacity or protect the streets or so on and so forth, and who put their lives in jeopardy to protect people from harm. Then you have the tujar, the people of business and uh, mercantile acumen, people who are smart when it comes to business, so on and so forth. And without these three functions of society, society couldn't stand. Without these three things, a human being couldn't survive as an individual, a family couldn't thrive, and a society couldn't exist without these three things. And these three things, the asal of them, the masar of these three things, is Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala, He is ultimately the guide. And He ultimately is the protector, and He ultimately, Ta'ala, is the provider. And He ultimately, Ta'ala, is, is the provider. So we find in the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the command to seek guidance from Allah Taala alone, to single out Allah as the only one who can truly guide, and to single out Allah Taala as being the only one who can protect us in both worlds, and to single out Allah Taala with sustenance and providing for us, as Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, this is found in Surah Al Ankabut, Allah Taala he said that Ibrahim he said. فَبْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَمْلِكُونَ لَكُمْ رِزْقًا Indeed, those that you call upon besides Allah don't control sustenance for you. فَبْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقَ وَعْبُدُوهُ وَشْكُرُوا لَهِ Seek your sustenance from Allah alone, Ibrahim said to his people. Seek your sustenance from Allah alone. Allah is the one who provides. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, in the hadith of Anas, Indeed, the messenger of the Lord of the universe, Jibreel, placed the following revelation within my soul. That no soul will die until it receives the sustenance of full. Even if it seems as though it is coming slow. So fear Allah and seek your sustenance in the most beautiful and perfect fashion. And do not allow the fact that your risk is coming, that your sustenance is coming slowly to drive you to seeking your sustenance in a manner that it involves disobedience to Allah. For indeed what is with Allah, 
the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, for indeed what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for you cannot be gotten except by obeying him. So the Muslim, Ibn Taymi rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions this hadith and other statements that are in the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says that there are two things that are found as it relates the asbab. Because when we want something from Allah, Tabarak wa ta'ala, then we do two things. What are they? We put our trust upon Allah, and then we just wait for it to come. What do we do? We take the means. Right? We take the means. Wal asbab naw'an. And the means are of two types. And the means are of two types. There are asbabun hissiya and asbabun ma'nawiya, he says. There are physical means. Rolling up your sleeves, going out, working. Right? And there are asbabun ma'nawiya, And there are spiritual means. There are spiritual means. And he weighs that you bring about barakah to your sustenance. Things that you do that cause Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that uh, are a means for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide more for you and to bless your wealth. And so, this definition can be built and it gives us further details to that broader definition that Arab is Al Khaliq al Malik al Mudabbir li Jami al Umur. That the Lord is the creator, the owner, and the controller of all affairs. We say that from his control of all affairs is that he controls harm and benefit. And that goes back to the three things. Which are Al Hidayatu wa Nasr wa Rizq, as Ibn Utami rahimullah ta'ala has outlined. Guidance, safety and security and protection, and thirdly, sustenance and wealth. Sustenance and wealth. And each of those things are no'an. Each of those things are no'an, just as Arubiya and Tarbiya are no'an. That which is general and that which is specific or that which is general and that which you can say is khas special for the mustafun al akhyar for the people who are chosen by Allah for the loved creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his, his awliya his allies may Allah make us from them and forgive us for our shortcomings and so they will receive a nasib awfar they will receive the vastest most abundant portion of guidance and the most important and special type of guidance, and the most important and special type of safety and security and defense, and the most important and special type of sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.